This tutorial is going to continue our discussion of, con of calculating value drivers. In this tutorial, we're going to calculate two value drivers. We're going to calculate our income tax rate and our dividend payout ratio. We're going to use these percentages that we calculate to forecast what our income tax rate is going to be in the future, what percentage of income before tax is paid as income tax expense, and we're also going to use the dividend payout ratio to calculate our depreciation expense based on our average balance of plant, property, and equipment at cost. Let's start with our income tax rate. The first thing I'm going to do is insert a row between net income and income tax expense. And then, like I did for sales growth rate, I'm going to italicize it and shift it over to the right. You could do this in a whole other sheet if you didn't want to have these as part of your statement. Um, it's up to you, but this just sort of makes it easy for me, so that's how I do it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the, ex the percentage of taxable income that the company paid as tax in each of the last three years. And I'm going to use that to make an educated guess on what their income tax rate is going to be in the future. So in 2012, Hershey paid 354000 in tax on a $1.015 million taxable income. That's not zero dollars. What it is is 35, 34.9%. What I can do here is drag this over and that'll give me the income tax expense divided by the taxable income, right? Income before tax is taxable income for each of the previous years. So it looks like Hershey's paid as little as 34.7% and as much as 37% in income tax. Well, let's average this. And I'll average these 35.5% and in this case I'm going to use that average as my value driver. And what this means is percent of income before tax. So 35%, 35.5% of our income before tax we will use to forecast our income tax expense. So 35.5% of income before tax is going to be our forecasted income tax expense for the year. Let's do one other. Let's take a look at dividend payout ratio. The dividend payout ratio, we can describe it or define it as the percentage of net income that is returned to shareholders in the form of dividends or um, share repurchases. So I'm going to scroll down just a little bit. I want net income toward the top. And I'm going to insert three rows. So to find out what percentage of net income is returned to shareholders, I need to understand that net income goes to one of two places. A firm who has a positive net income, as Hershey's has, either one, gives it to shareholders, or two, keeps it. If they keep it, we call it retained earnings, and we keep track of that on the balance sheet by increasing the cumulative balance of retained earnings. Retained earnings is a stockholder's equity account, and you find it down below here. Under stockholders equity, we've got retained earnings. And you see how it's been increasing each year? That's because each year, Hershey has, has had net income that it's kept. And all of the net income that it keeps gets added to the previous balance of retained earnings. And this is accumulated. This is the sum total of all the net income that Hershey's has ever earned, but has not paid out as dividends. So if we know these numbers, we can use these numbers to figure out how much net income they're giving to shareholders. I want to hide some of these accounts so that I just can focus on what I need. All right, so I've got net income, the three rows I added, plus the portion of my balance sheet that deals with stockholders' equity, starting with retained earnings. So the first row I'm going to give myself is additions, to retained earnings, and I'm going to use that 
plus the fact that I know that net income goes either to retained earnings to dividends or to dividends, I'm going to say dividends paid. And I will use those numbers to calculate my dividend payout ratio. And like I did with all the other drivers, that I'm creating by adding rows into my income statement, I'm going to italicize it and scoot it to the right so that I can know when I'm glancing at it that some of these things are not part of the actual statement. Okay, so in 2012, Hershey's made $660,000 in net income. It's really $660 million, but I'm just making it easy on myself. Of that, part of it they kept Part of it they paid to shareholders. Well, I can figure out how much they kept. I can figure out how much they kept because in this year, they also added to retained earnings in an amount that's the difference between these two. So if last year they ended the year with 4.7 million in retained earnings, and this year they started the year with 5.02 million, that means that they added the difference between these two. 319000 So net income, they kept some. The amount that they gave to shareholders is the difference between what they earned and what they kept. They gave the rest away, well, to, to their shareholders in the form of dividends and share repurchases. So if they paid 341000 in dividends, that means that they returned $1, no, 52.16% of their income is dividends. That's the dividend payout ratio. If we look at it for 2011 a little more quickly, they ended the year with 4.7 million in retained earnings while they started the year with 4.3. That means they kept 333,000 out of this net income. What they didn't keep they dispersed as dividends, so it's the difference between those two. Net income minus addition to retains earnings lets us know the dividends paid. The dividend payout ratio, in turn, is going to be the dividends paid divided by net income. Not zero dollars, rather 47.0%. Then for a value driver, again, I'm going to average them. 49.3, and I'm going to call that the dividend payout ratio, and I'm going to say 49.3% of net income. So 49.3% of net income is going to be paid out to shareholders in the form of dividends. So in this tutorial, we went over how to calculate the income tax rate as the income tax expense as a percentage of taxable income and the dividend payout ratio as a percentage of dividends paid divided by net income. Now we have two additional value drivers and we're going to do depreciation rate in the next tutorial. Happy calculating, good luck, and let me know, as always, if you have any questions.